welcome to Grace Lutheran Church for Sunday, May 24th, the seventh Sunday of Easter. And now for our prelude. Good morning. Welcome to Grace Lutheran Church, and once again, welcome to our worship service for this uh, seventh Sunday of Easter, and we're very glad to have you with us here today. Um, we are also very glad to have with us here today Georgie Graybill and Mitch Houston, who are providing our special music. Thank you so much to them for coming in and playing at a safe distance, and also for Steve and for all of them to come in and rehearse ahead of time so that we could have this wonderful music today. Uh, next Sunday is Pentecost. Um, it's the final Sunday before we, well, we have Pentecost and then we have Trinity Sunday and then we go into that season of Sundays after Pentecost. Um, generally, I will tell you, I, as I would normally tell you, wear red. It's Pentecost. Wear red. We'll have red pyramids and red flowers. You should wear red. You know what? Wear red anyway. I won't be able to see you, but you'll be able to see yourselves. Actually, I will be able to see you because we're going to do another Zoom coffee hour next Sunday. Um, you'll get a link about that in the email. So yes, when we have the Zoom coffee hour next Sunday, I expect to see you wearing red. I'll, and, if, and, if you, and if you're not, I'll mute your microphone. Uh, let's see. Oh, our June newsletter is coming out soon um, with a, 
update on the status of things here at Grace Lutheran as far as our worship practices. There's also a new announcement coming out from the outreach team on a new outreach project on how we can further help our neighbors in this time of pandemic. And speaking of helping our neighbors, we continue to help the international students who were stranded at Muhlenberg College this summer because of the pandemic. They couldn't go home and the dining halls are closed. So we are collecting uh, contributions for them. Well, we put together 30 kitchen kits for them last week and we are continuing to collect contributions which will be used to purchase uh, grocery store gift cards for them so they can continue to feed themselves throughout the summer till the dining hall opens again and the meal service plan starts again because for right now they are really stranded without anything so you would make that check out to grace lutheran church with um muhlenberg student covid relief or something to, to that effect in the in the memo line um that's that's it for the announcements for today we continue as always with our thanksgiving and blessing uh, as we normally do today, appropriately enough, because Monday is Memorial Day, we have a prayer and a blessing for Memorial Day. And this is from the ELCA prayer book from, for the armed services. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation, who comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. A reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. A reading from Hebrews. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Let us pray. O oh God, we remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you on earth, who have run the race and who now rest from their labors, especially those who died in service to their country, as we remember them on Memorial Day tomorrow. Bless those who still grieve fallen comrades, families who still wait for their beloved in the armed services to come home, and of course, all who serve to protect them and keep them safe. Keep us all in union with your saints, and bring us with them to the joyous feast of heaven through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We begin our worship with thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you showered us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty, and give us the life that only you can give. To you, we give honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our gathering hymn is Son of God, Eternal Savior.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of glory, your Son, Jesus Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
verses 6 to 14. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 14, and chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as through something strange were happening to you, but rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are riled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the Spirit of glory, which is the Spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert, like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Revisit him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. gospel for this week is from John chapter 17 beginning at the first verse. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that the son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from this world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, Protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. 
This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O oh Christ. Christ. Good morning. And now I have a time for a message with the children. Good morning, children. It's so good to see you. Well, not really see you, but I miss you so much. And I, I can't wait for the day that I get to see you again. Today in our lessons, we had a story about Jesus going up to heaven. He was gathered together with his friends and he was telling them what they needed to do. And then while they were standing there talking, all of a sudden he rose up into the air and they watched him go. And then there were two men who said, why are you standing there looking? Well, we have a story about it in the Spark Story Bible. This is called the Ascension. And so there's the disciples looking up, hey, Jesus, after Jesus died and rose again, he and his disciples got together near Jerusalem. Jesus had some instructions for them. As you know, God is doing amazing things in the world, Jesus said, and your help is needed. We need you to go tell stories about me. Tell your friends and family and everyone what you, that you meet what you've learned by following me. Be my witnesses in the world. Then suddenly, Jesus was rising up in the air. What was going on? He was being lifted up into a cloud. His friends looked around. Two men in white robes had joined them. The men said, why are you just standing around looking up toward heaven? Don't worry, Jesus will come back someday. Right, said one of Jesus' disciples. Meanwhile, we have some work to do. Let's get going. So Jesus ascended to heaven, and the disciples couldn't see him anymore. But at the same time, Jesus is still with us. We might not be able to see him face to face, but he is still with us. He still loves us. He still cares about us. He still prays for us. For example, you're looking at me on the screen right now. Now let me do this. Hello. I'm not on the screen anymore. You can't see me, but I'm still over here, and I still love you, and I still miss you, and I'm still praying for you. Well, it's kind of the similar thing with Jesus. I'm not Jesus, of course, but even though Jesus is in heaven with God, we can still talk to him. He still loves us. He's still with us in our hearts. And even though we in the church can't be physically together in this building right now because of this illness going on, we are still the church. Even though we're scattered all over McCungie and Emmaus and the Lehigh Valley, we are still the church. We still love each other. We are still a, a strong body of witnesses to Jesus, even when we can't see each other and hug each other. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for bringing us together as one, binding us together through baptism as your children, and forming us into a strong church that loves each other and cares for each other through thick and thin no matter what. And let all God's children say, Amen. See you next time. In the name of Jesus. Amen. From time to time, the Gospel of John shifts from narration and dialogue to directly addressing the hearer. In the theater, this would be called breaking the fourth wall. For example, in chapter 20, verses 30 and 31, John writes, Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The book pauses for a moment to reach out directly to the reader. I've heard people object to this. They say, but that's an agenda. John had an agenda. I just want the plain facts. Here's the thing. There is no such thing. Everyone has an agenda. Everyone has an idea they want to get across. Every narrative is shaded by the viewpoint of the one giving it, by their social location, 
by the place they occupy in the world and by the power they wield or think they wield. You need to be aware of this whenever you listen to someone or read their words. This is just as true in our times as it was in the time of Jesus. But yeah, so John has an agenda. So did the other three gospel writers. John just happens to be the most upfront about it. That stepping out of the story to talk to us happens in today's reading. This is just before he is arrested and Jesus is praying for his disciples. But not only them, toward the end of the prayer, not in today's reading, he adds, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word. That's us. Those who will believe in me through their word is us, you and me. He's praying for those of us who come later, those of us who will come to believe based on the testimony of the disciples, on the testimony passed down through the years. In this passage, Jesus is also praying for us. Of course, when we hear the word, the Lord's Prayer, we naturally think of the prayer that he taught his disciples when they asked him, Lord, teach us to pray. We say it every day. But I call this passage also the Lord's Prayer, or a part of one anyway. It's a prayer that our Lord prayed and still prays for us. Is it not great comfort to know that our Lord himself prayed to the Father for us? Jesus knows that sometimes it's rough to be one of his followers. Among ourselves, we sometimes disagree on theology or worship practices or both. We don't always agree on the exact meaning of essential, and that divides us. We are human, and we sin, and that divides us. And furthermore, we want to be in power. We want to be in charge. We want to have all the answers. We want to know what's coming so we can be prepared for it and take it by the reins. Once again, the disciples are so much like us, or should I say, we are so much like the disciples. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time that you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. This is today's first reading, as well as the reading for Ascension Day, which we observed on Thursday. Jesus is ascending to heaven, but first the disciples want to know, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? In other words, yes, Lord, we know you're the Son of God who made all things and who was restored to life from the dead, hallelujah, but, um, do we get power now? Do, do we get to kick the Romans out and run things ourselves now? What, what's the deal here, God? And Jesus answers them, it is not for you to know. And then he is taken up and two men in white robes appear. They ask the disciples, why are you standing here looking up? He'll come back the same way as you saw him go. I wonder, could these have been the same two in dazzling clothes who met the women at the tomb and asked, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Jesus always has to have these two guys come behind him and explain what's going on. To me, these two angelic appearances, one in Luke's gospel and one in the book of Acts written by Luke, are like bookends. They function together. In the first, we hear God telling us, run and tell that. Run and tell everyone Christ is risen. And in the second one, God is saying, wait. Wait and you will receive power on, uh, from on high. Wait and you will receive the, the Holy Spirit. And then you will be my witnesses to the end of the earth. And putting them together, what both of these bookends are saying is that our good Lord is in charge and we need to listen. Listen, not just talk, not just act, listen. Be still and know that God is God. This pandemic is awful. I hate it. Everybody hates it. I hate that we're not having church in person. I hate that we aren't together. I hate that I can't hug people. Do you miss hugs? I really miss hugs. I'm hugging my cats, but it's not the same. The point is we all want to worship together in person again, but for the safety of the most vulnerable among us, we can't do that right now. 
And God does tell us over and over again in the Bible to look out for the most vulnerable among us. So we can't worship together in person right now. But that's the only thing we can't do right now. There is no limit on the things that we can do to be church even without being in a building. Just to name a few. We can take time to grow our individual prayer practice, really spend time in deep prayerful communion with God. I'll tell you, these past few weeks have done amazing good for my prayer life. I am not only speaking to God, but hearing from God in a whole new way. We can still worship. We can pray and praise all day long and not only on Sundays in this building. We can still love and serve our neighbor. I know you know of many ways to do this and so does your church. Read the June newsletter when it comes out. Your outreach committee has a wonderful new project cooking. We can still pray for one another. The grace prayer chain is still going strong. We can pray for our friends and as our Lord commanded us, we can pray for our enemies. We can pray no matter where we are, and we can listen and read and remember the prayer that Jesus prayed for us. Jesus said, I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. And this unity Jesus talks about doesn't rely on us alone but on what God does through us and sometimes even in spite of us. God made us one in Christ and goes on making us one in Christ throughout all space and time. God is not limited to these four walls. God is not limited by anything. Church, in the liturgical year, we are between the ascension of Jesus to the Father and the coming of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. In eternity, we are in the time between the first and the second coming of Jesus Christ. Today is the Sunday of Memorial Day weekend and the umpteenth week of stay-at-home orders. In our personal lives, we are in many different times and seasons. But wherever we are, in space, in time, we rejoice in the certain knowledge that Christ is with us, always making us one. We, not this building, are the church, the very body of Christ. And let the church say, Amen. Amen? Amen. We continue with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O oh God, call your people to be one as you are one. Unite the church in the truth of your gospel, the love of our neighbor, and the call to proclaim your reign to all people. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear Hear our prayer. prayer. Breathe life into your creation. Guide your people as we explore the mysteries of the universe. We pray for the work of scientists whose skill enriches our understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. prayer. Make your justice known among the nations of the earth. Protect the vulnerable, especially in this time of crisis. Redirect those who use violence and greed as weapons. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. O Lord, come to the aid of your children. We pray for those engulfed in grief, those without supportive families, all who are isolated, powerless, or afraid, and those who are sick, including Cynthia, Ron, Kathy, Jeanette, Bonnie, Betsy, Richard, Beth, Fred, and Patty. Heal them in mind and spirit that all may rest their anxieties in your care. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. Give courage to all who embark on new ventures. We especially remember this day those who risked their lives to serve in our armed forces. Grant safety to those serving at home or abroad and assure them of your never failing strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Raise all your saints to eternal life. We remember especially Owen Bastian Sr., father of Nancy Reimer and grandfather of Sherry Nonamaker. We give you thanks for the faithful examples of those who listen to your voice and now rest in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Thanks be to God. 
Hallelujah.